How's it going my bakers? Welcome back to another episode of the Principles of Baking. Today we have a simple question. Is it worth using a pre-ferment when cold fermenting? So let's go to the kitchen and find out. Okay, let's get right to the business. Here's what we're going to do today. We'll make three breads. One with a pre-ferment and two without. One of the breads without the pre-ferment will be bulk fermented in the fridge for 24 hours. The second one will be bulk fermented in the fridge for 12 hours, just for comparison's sake. The third one will be made with a pre-ferment, which will be left for 12 hours to ferment. Then it will be mixed into the main dough, which will be left in the fridge for an additional 12 hours of fermentation. The main comparison I want to do today is between the two breads, which will take the same amount of time to make. The one with a pre-ferment and the one that will be bulk fermented in the fridge for 24 hours. My opinion is that using a pre-ferment when cold fermenting makes no sense, because we can simply leave the dough in the fridge for longer. If it's going to take the same amount of time to make, why would you add the extra step of making a pre-ferment? This is how we're going to test it. I mixed the first dough and I placed it in the fridge. It will remain there for 24 hours. At the same time, I'm making a pre-ferment. It will be left at room temperature for 12 hours. And then it will be mixed into the dough and that dough will be left in the fridge for another 12 hours like I mentioned earlier. So in the end, both breads will take about the same amount of time to make. But why are we doing this? A while ago, I posted a video comparing pre-ferments and cold bulk fermentation. In that video, I concluded that cold bulk fermentation beats a pre-ferment in every way. It develops far more flavor, it makes the crust crispier and the crumb more substantial. And it simplifies the process because we don't have to make a separate thing. But as soon as I published that video, people started asking me about combining the two methods. And I always told everyone, just leave your dough to ferment for longer, why make that pre-ferment? I hope we can put that one to rest today. But let's just get back to comparing cold fermentation to pre-ferments. Which one of them is better was not really the right question to ask. There are some nuances to the answer. One method is not better than the other. They're just different. And I guess I'm a bit biased, just because I like to simplify the process and I prefer the results from cold fermentation. There was a great comment under that video mentioning baguettes. Using cold bulk fermented dough or a dough made with a poolish will result in far different breads in the end. Fermenting the whole dough makes the bread more chewy, but at the same time it boosts flavor quite a lot. Using a poolish improves the flavor slightly, but it gives the bread a much lighter and area crumb, or at least it is able to, and it can make for a thinner crust too. All great characteristics of a baguette. So when it comes to cold fermentation versus pre-ferment, there is no better method. What is better is up to the baker or up to the person eating the bread. But when it comes to combining cold bulk fermentation and pre-ferments, that's where I say simply fermenting for longer is better than using pre-ferment and then fermenting the dough in the fridge. I've said that with confidence, even though I had not tried this side by side. Obviously, you can only find this out by trying it yourself. My taste buds are different from yours. But let's just get back to our three doughs here. So, the one on the left has been in the fridge for 24 hours. The one in the middle was made with the pre-ferment, which took 12 hours to rise, which was then mixed into the dough and left in the fridge for 12 more hours. And the one on the right has only been in the fridge for 12 hours. When making the final dough, I did use slightly less yeast in the dough that was made with the pre-ferment, and that was to compensate for the amount of yeast coming from the pre-ferment itself. As it rises, it multiplies. So I thought technically in the end, the dough with the pre-ferment would have more yeast in it. There was 2 grams of yeast in the doughs without the pre-ferment and 1.7 grams of yeast in the one with the pre-ferment. If you want to find the written formula, it is in the link below the video title. Ok, we'll do the final shaping now, we'll place the doughs in loaf tins, we'll let them rise and then we'll bake them. Kind of a short video today, I don't really have much else to say here. We've done these kinds of comparisons countless times, there's nothing new here. All I want is the answer to the question, is it worth using pre-ferment when cold fermenting? And I'm pretty sure that it is a yes or no question. So here we go, we got our three loaves, they all look pretty much the same on the outside, and obviously they have all split open on the side too. They were a bit underproved, which doesn't make any difference in this test. It is the fermentation time up until the final proof which really counts. Now cutting them open, I can tell you that the crust on all breads is exactly the same. Next up, I smelled them all to see if they smell any different. I did not feel any difference between a 24 hour fermented one and the one with the pre-ferment. But the one on the right, predictably, smelled a little bit lighter than the other two. When it comes to softness of the crumb, the 24 hour fermented loaf was very slightly denser, very slightly chewier. If I had not compared them side by side, 
I would have never been able to tell the difference. That's how little the difference was. But when it came to taste, which is arguably the most important part, the first two breads tasted exactly the same. I could feel zero difference between the 24 hour fermented one and the one with the pre-ferment. But they were far more flavorful than the one that was fermented only for 12 hours. So is it worth using pre-ferment when cold fermenting? That's a definite no from me. The only significant difference is that it takes more work when you're making pre-ferment. Perhaps there would be differences in different recipes. Perhaps my taste is not very sensitive. Or perhaps I'm just biased again. If you are one of those people that use a pre-ferment when cold fermenting, then try this comparison for yourself. Then tell us of your results. You might be surprised. So what do you think of my test and my results? Have you ever tried something like this before? Do you use pre-ferments when cold fermenting? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.